मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए ह गणशाम महाराज नी जे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जे सुप्रीम ओमाइरी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. In the Vachanamrut, Maharaj says that my devotees, sadhus, brahmacharis, all male and female devotees should remember my Leela Charitras, meaning divine incidences that I have performed in the past. But a question arises, why remember the Charitras of Maharaj? Well, what Maharaj is doing is he's showing us and giving us a perspective so we can understand his ruchi meaning his liking, what he likes and what he doesn't like. He's showing these different, different modes of his principles via his charitras. By doing this, he's kind of diluting the form formula. Just like how in chemistry or physics or any kind of math, there's equations to solve problems. In the same manner, there's an equation to understand Bhagwan, But Bhagwan doesn't straight up give us the formula. What he does is he dilutes everything in such a manner to make it easy so that all we have to do is just plug and play so that there is not a problem in understanding him. Now, I want to give you an example. You're probably wondering that why does Bhagwan give his charitras or show us his charitras so he can show us his ruchi, his liking. What is the reason for that? Well, President Obama, he lives in the White House, right? Suppose he calls you one day and he says that, hey, come and live with me in the White House. Without any kind of reason, he just says, come and live with me in the White House. So obviously he's the president, so you accept his whole invitation and all but moreover suppose you come there with your nature of suppose you have a liking to uh, pretty much mess around be mischievous uh, make a mess things like that draw on the walls of the White House etc so on and so forth he's not gonna like that why because it's not in his liking in the same exact manner. Bhagwan wants us and wants to invite us to his Akshardham. He wants us to live there with him. But if we don't have the same swabhaus, natures, behavior, same qualities, or ruchi, likings, then how could we stay with him? I mean, even if we tried, we can maybe stay for one day, two day, couple years, couple hundred thousand years but then afterwards since Bhagwan and us don't get along due to our fault or our likings Bhagwan says that you have to go back down to, to earth and fix yourself and then you can come back so that's what he really wants us to do but via his charitras via reading his different different divine incidences we can understand that Bhagwan likes this and Bhagwan doesn't like this. So today I come with you for a charitra that I read 
that I want to share. And from this charitra, one can understand that Bhagwan's uh, intention or one of his principles is to do this particular thing. So one time Bhagwan was sitting in Gadara with an assembly there underneath the nim tree. And he was talking amongst all the devotees and santos there. And Sadguru Nishkuran Swami came there. And Sadguru Nishkuran Swami came there and he pleaded to Maharaj that Maharaj, please come to the river Gela. It's a river next to uh, Gadara. Uh, Bhagwan went there to do snan mostly every day. And that river is Prasadini. It's very, very holy. And he said, please come to the river Gela there and uh, for overlook um, the work that's being done to pick the rocks uh, for the foundation work of the Mandir Gadara. So at that time, there's six Mandirs that were built and established and constructed by Sriji Maharaj. Out of them, Gadara was one of them. And at that time, the construction work was going on for the Mandir, the foundation work. So what Santos did, Santos, Parsons, and Haribhaktos, they would go to the river and pick stones for, you know, the process of making the foundation of the mandir. So Nishkuran Swami came to Maharaj and said, Maharaj, please come and overlook the work that's being done to see, uh, you know, which rocks can be suitable for the mandir. So Maharaj ended the assembly there. And Maharaj got up and... Uh, went and walked to the river Gila, which was nearby the town. Uh, and he sat on a big rock there. And Maharaj, when he sat there, Sadguru Muktanan Swami came and sat right in front of Maharaj. After that, Ma he was having his darshan. The Parsads and the other Santos and other Haribhaktos started to do their seva of picking rocks and Maharaj was overlooking this work. As Maharaj sat down, they started to work even quickly and quickly to please Maharaj so that the work can be finished fast. So Sadguru Muktan Swami was sitting there and afterwards there was a couple of Haribhaktos that came and sat down, mostly elderly Haribhakto from Gadara, the village. So Maharaj said, Swami, why don't you speak or say some words to these Haribhaktos so myself and they, they can listen. Sadguru Muktanan Swami, he was considered the mother of this satsang. He was considered such a figure that he played both roles of the Guru of Maharaj as well as the Shishya of Maharaj. No other Sadguru in the whole Sampradaya as of right now has played such a role of being both a teacher as well as a student. Sadguru Muktan Swami played that role. In Sadguru Gunatyan Swami's Vato, Swami says that Muktanan Swami was such a son that if there was 2,000 devotees sitting in front of Swami, he would, and if, he, if Swami was lecturing and talking, he would be able to fulfill and answer all 2,000 people's questions by his talks. Think about that. Each and every person must have some different, different, you can say, questions in their mind. Yet, without even those people asking Swami, Swami would say and those people's, you know, those people's answers would be fulfilled or those people's questions would be fulfilled. That's how great he was. So Swami would talk. And in this charitra, Maharaj commanded Swami to talk, so he started to talk. And we sing the kadi all the time. Namo Mukta Nanda Prabhupadatana Sevaka Sada Mahasastra Bhyasi Vedatana Gumave Padakada Kare Varta Jare Sura Sarita Dara Samavahe Kusangi Satsangi Sakala Jana Chitte Atichahe. In this verse, in Harilil Amrut, this verse is recited after Swami, remembered after Swami, that 
Swami was such a saint that Namo Muktananda Prabhupada Sevak Sada. He was a Sevak. Maha Sastra Abhyasi. He was also a very learned scholar, a very educated saint in the Sampradaya. There is an understatement that Sadguru Muktan Swami was not educated. Due to that, he asked so many questions in the Vachramut. But that's the complete opposite. If most of you maybe listened to Nishkam Swami's Katha a couple days ago, Swami had the most questions asked in the Vachnarmut, particularly 90. And from those, he asked the questions for other younger saints for their benefit. But Swami was very, very educated. Swami was very great. But due to that factor, Swami also spoke in such a fashion that it would flow like a river and everyone would be completely engrossed in his talks. So Swami started to talk. After that, Swami talked for a little bit and then he, all the Haribhaktas there said that Swami had a very, very good talk about whatever particular topic it didn't say. But after that, Maharaj told Somlakachar to ask the older people in the crowd that how do you recognize my santos? Meaning, how do you realize them? What do you reali realize them to be like? So, none of the older Haribhaktas could answer, you know, how santos are. But there was a herdsman in the back sitting, and he said that Sadguru Muktanan Swami and Sadguru Brahma Brahmanan Swami are very, very great santos. So, Maharaj kind of inquired, but what about these other santos? Meaning, Gopan Swami, Gunatian Swami, and other younger santos. What about them? So then the bar, the herdsman said that those are just santos that gather when it's time to eat, but nothing else. That's what he said. And Marad said that your understanding is not correct. Marad said that these santos are very great. You just don't know it. Imagine. Maharaj being the teacher and all 500 non santo and the 1500 regular other santo total of 2000 santos being the students of Maharaj yet Maharaj is able to say Maharaj was Maharaj Maharaj was Bhagwan himself the supreme lord himself and he was able to say that these santos are very great that's the greatness of Maharaj. It can be seen in the world that people who are very high and great, like kings and queens, they're not able to completely accept or completely say or even foretell that my, my staff or the people below me that do my work, my servants, are greater than me or not greater than me, at least they can say that they are great. But the divine part about this Sampradaya, the divine part about Swamina and Sampradaya, is that not only Maharaj said this in his Charitra, this was one of his Charitras, but more so, Sadguru Santos, as of right now, particularly our Puja Guruji, is able to completely, 100% fulfill this task, you can say. How so? Well, in Sadguru Smriti Mahotsav number one, if anyone has seen the videos or highlights, he called all the santos of our Sant Mandal and sat them down on a stage and he was able to perform the pujan of each and every saint and dance among them. In Sadguru, Sadguru Smriti Mahotsav two, he called each and every great saint in the Sampradaya, small, young, those santos who did different, different tasks for mandirs and many, many types of santos who did different tasks. And Guruji himself did the pujan of each and every sant on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people. And in his pravachan, he even said that these santos are very great. This is the divine, you can say, attribute 
that Puja Guruji possesses, which is only in the Swamiran Sampradaya. Even Maharaj says in the Vachramrut, Gadada, first chapter, 58th Vachramrut, that one should believe that one, who the only means of becoming a staunch devotee is by behaving as a servant of servants of God and by realizing that all of these devotees are great and I am inferior. Now, maybe these young kids might not understand, but some of those who are here in this assembly and some of those who are watching, how many can completely accept this factor? I want to ask you that you have the thought when you come into Mandir or when you're talking, talking amongst other kids your age, not older, your age, how many of you can say or think at least in your mind according to the Zavachnamrut that everyone is great and I am inferior, meaning I am not great, I'm very low and everyone is great. How many of you have these thoughts? I can see. Do you have any of these thoughts? I won't say any of your names. Don't worry. You're on live. No. It's very, very difficult. Yet, Maharaj Shoja shows us through his charitra here, his ruchi, his liking, that he expects everyone to become the das. Hari ke das hi das, tin ke das hoi kar, chad kapat kar na nash, vartana shud hoi kar. Das na das thai ne vadi jere sat sangama Bhakti te ni bhali manisha rachi satena rangama All these kadis are for us to accept that what is Bhagwan's ruchi? What is his liking? What does he expect from us to do? He expects us to become the das na das Meaning the servant of all these devotees And the only way and the first initial step to become the dasna das is to understand that everyone else is greater than myself and I am the lowest Hari Bhagat here sitting last in the assembly even if we're sitting front it doesn't matter where your physical status is it doesn't matter how great you are outside in the world it doesn't matter what kind of GPA you have how high or how smart you are or what kind of job you have. When you enter this door in this temple, in this satsang, we should think that we're the last in the assembly and everyone else is in front of us. That's the true liking of Maharaj. That's what Maharaj expects from us. And that's the only way that he would come and reside in our heart. And Maharaj shows us this in his charitra. That these, Maharaj says that these santos are very great. But you do not understand. Even in that time, we can see that devotees sitting in front of Sadguru Muktanand Swami, devotees sitting in front of Maharaj himself, are not able to grasp this understanding. Are not able to understand that everyone is great. This is just the charitra, meaning those Haribhaktas, I'm sure, knew this. But for us, for us to understand, is very important. And due to that, Maharaj himself said that Abadha Santo, these sant all of these Santos are very great, but you just don't know it. Then he called a saint by the name of Shantanan Swami. And he called Shantanan Swami and he told Shantanan Swami to come. And he said, Why don't you go ahead and call Siddhanan Swami for me? Now, Siddhanan Swami, see, you're probably wondering what are all these names mean well just a brief you can say note santos are named after their quality that they possess so in that time siddhan and swami siddh means pretty much completely who is uh has fulfilled everything and is completely in nirvana with god is pretty much enlightened you can say so the story behind Siddhanand Swami was that when he was a Parsad, he, this is a very, Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut, that the most difficult task of all is to constantly have manni vrutti, my, one's mind's vrutti in the form of God. But Siddhanand Swami, when he was a Parsad, in that time, he grasped, he pretty much 
was engrossed in Maharaj's murti in that time. So when he became a saint, Maharaj named him Siddhanand Swami because murti emne siddhati. Murti was completely with him. He was engrossed in the idol of God. So he called for Siddhanand Swami. So Shantan Swami went and called Siddhanand Swami. Siddhan Swami was pretty much in pretty much all sweaty. He was working. He had a tool in his right arm. And Maharaj he came there in front of Maharaj and he said, Ha Maharaj. His it was it's saying in the Charitra that his throat was like a peacock's throat. You know how it's constantly moving. In the same way, Swami was constantly murmuring, Swamnarayan, 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 Swamnarayan. I'm reminded of the Charitra of Puja Guruji that Puja Guruji was just in Gotib, um, which is a, a village in Panch Mahal in India, and there was a para in there. And in that time, it was midnight, maybe 12 30 ish, and Guruji was sleeping in his room, and the door was closed a little bit, it was open, and Santos there who were in his service heard noise coming from Puja Guruji's room. So they went closer and closer and they heard Puja Guruji was murmuring Swaminarayan, 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 like that. So then after in the morning when Guruji got up, the Santos inquired that Guruji, you should get some rest. You, why are you, you know, why are you awake and doing bhajan at this time? And Guruji said that one of my devotees, I can even say a particular name, Rajis Pari, he has a very. Um, he lives in Chicago, and he has this um, physical illness where he becomes weak and his joints hurt. He is in pain right now, and he's in ho- he's in the hospital. And due to that, I'm doing bhajan for him so that he would become well. And while Guruji was saying this story, he started to cry because he could not bear the pain of even one of his devotees. So even Puja Guruji had has this habit of saying Bhagwan's name Swaminarayan, Swaminarayan, Swaminarayan constantly so Siddhanand Swami when he came, his throat was moving and he was saying Swaminarayan, Swaminarayan so Maharaj pointed out that this is true greatness but the herdsman did not understand so he said that my santos constantly remember me my name and any kriya, any action that they do, anything that they do, they constantly remember me. In the Vachnamrut, Gatara first chapter 31st Vachnamrut, Maharaj says that greatness is not what you think is measured by. Greatness is due to one's faith in God and how much one follows the commands of God. This is Bhagwan's measurement. This is his yardstick. Now, we can say that Sometimes we read something or we hear something from someone and we take out our own measuring stick or our own measuring tape and we start to measure that this is what Maharaj likes and this is what Maharaj doesn't like. But that's not true. When we read the Vachnamrut, when we read these kinds of charitras, we can understand that Maharaj's liking is like this and Maharaj's, you can say, ruchi, his principles are behind this. So Maharaj says in that Vachramur that greatness is due to one's faith. Now Siddhanand Swami had that kind of faith. Due to that, he was pointed out of all those santos sitting or all those santos doing seva. Why did Maharaj himself select Siddhanand Swami to come and be shown to all those Haribhaktos, those elderly Haribhaktos that his own greatness? Because that was his own principle. And Maharaj pointed out that Siddhanand Swami has constant rapport of me, my murti, and also my name. Now Bhagwan is, what is Bhagwan showing there? That one should remember Bhagwan, one should do the bhajan of Bhagwan. Sadguru Gunatyan Swami in his vato, he says that Swamiran Mantra is very, very powerful. How so? Even a black cobra, if a black cobra were to bite us, and that poison, that venom, even if it would start to come into our bloodstream, by constantly chanting Bhagwan's name at that particular time, the black ve- the venom would be diluted. Now, let's think about it. Scientifically, if we think about it, or if we even think about it in the perspective of a doctor. 
these are words, okay? Something that's mentally occurring. This is a body, which is something different. You're telling me, or at least Swami is telling us, that by chanting one mantra, meaning Swami Narayan, one word, if we can look at it in that fashion, a black venom or a black cobra's venom would be diluted. Then imagine how powerful Bhagwan's name is. Not only that, but Swami himself says that the vishes, meaning all these punch vishes, all the good, good things that we think are here in this world, they would also be conquered. One would become Brahm Rup, and one would not be bound by Kaad Karma and Maya, but only if one does the bhajan of Bhagwan. Now, kids nowadays here, due to technology, you can say, have these kinds of counters, as you can see. And they keep these counters and they say Bhagwan's name. Some have the niyam of doing 1,000 jumps, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. But I encourage each and every one of you to get one of these counters and at least make a niyam for yourself that in one day I want to do this many jumps. And see how your day becomes. See how your life becomes if you consistently do this for a span of one month, two months, six months. But Bhagwan's Ruchi, as we can tell and see, is like this. So after Siddhartha Swami came, he showed them. Then all the elderly people, they understood that, wow, this saint, these not only Muktan Swami and Brahman Swami, but all the Paramahansas of Maharaj are very great. So Maharaj showed us this principle via his charitra and after that he told everyone that one should remember in every each and every action Bhagwan if we are let's say if we're going to school or if we're taking a test or if we're you know if we're doing any kind of activity of showering or sitting down or talking to friends or anything one should remember Bhagwan at least his name as well now nowadays kids question and they question that I have to study for the SATs I have to study for an exam I have a lot of homework I have a lot of projects and how do you expect me to remember Bhagwan all the time or at least not all the time how do you expect me to remember Bhagwan my brain can only go in one direction but Maharaj gives an example in the Vachramur Gadra last chapter 9th Vachramur he says that just like how a horseman has if, 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 if a horseman is sitting on a horse and riding a horse he has his vision in front so that nothing can obstruct his way he has his vision on his legs he has his vision everywhere front back or I can give a modern example if we're driving a car Neobuga in particular you're driving a car how many different divisions does your mind make number one the front number two the rear uh, the rear view mirror number three the side mirror number four the side window number five even the other your passenger side window number six braking number seven accelerating number eight reading the signs of where to go number nine reading the speed speed limit of 30 40 50 and number 10, police. All these we remember all the time, constantly, and we don't even know it. Oh, and number 11, Katha or Kirtan on, on your CD player in your car. And if you have a, someone with you, number 12, talking to them. All these things we remember at the same time, but we don't even know it. In the same manner, when we're doing something, no one can see it, but in our mind, Bhagwan's name should be there. Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, chanting it. Trust me, no one can see it except Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush. But in reality, that's the only two that we have to show. We don't have to show the world. We don't need to show the world. And if they want to know, they know. If they don't, they don't. But if Maharaj knows and if Puruji, Guruji knows, then that's enough. And that's enough credit to get you into Akshardham, our final goal. So via this Bhagwan's Charitra, one should understand that Bhagwan expects us to remember him, number one. Number two, not only that, but Bhagwan expects us 
that whenever we enter the temple, we should understand that I have no status. I am not the president of a company or a CEO of a company or I am not, a, you can say, a professor or a teacher or I am not a lawyer or I am not a dentist or I am not a student. I am completely zero. I am completely in the back of the assembly and each and every Haribhagat is in front. When that happens, your whole character will change. Then even if your leg touches another Haribhagat's leg, not on purpose, by accident, you would right there and then, you would bow down to them. Because you, you know that Bhagwan lives inside of him, or whoever. In the same fashion, any kriya or any action that you do, you would be completely oblivious to your surroundings of what will other people think. And you would know that everyone is greater than me. And I am inferior. I am completely a low, low devotee in this satsang. And when that happens, then Bhagwan becomes pleased. These are the two principles that Maharaj teaches in this charitra particularly. So one should read the charitra of Maharaj and one should understand them. One should read Vachanamrut Swamini Vato. And one should get one of these counters if one doesn't. And one should remember Bhagwan. Because in the end, no matter how much we do, no matter if we're in the world or if we're in this religion, and no matter how much achievements we do, have or we are going to get or how many degrees we have Bhagwan's end principle is for him to for us to associate with the Akantik Satpurush and to remember him constantly in the end saying this Jai Swami Narayan Shri Tapatim Shri Dharam Rade Vishwaram Bhaktidhar Matmadam Vasudevam Are Madhavam Kesavam Kamdam Karanam Si Swami Narayanam Nilkantham Shri Gansham Maharaj Nijay